Hi, my name is Bob, KK4DIV, and today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the equipment I use for radar operation. Now, I made a video not too long ago about what radar is. Radar stands for Rapid Deployment Amateur Radio, and the whole idea and the concept behind it is that you carry minimalistic gear around, uh, you set up, make some contacts, break it down, move on to another location and do it all over again. It's a great way to uh, see some different scenery, get in the outdoors and uh, just enjoy the radio hobby and enjoy the outdoors at the same time. This is my gear. I uh, carried around in this backpack. It's a little bit large. The backpack is. There's uh, quite a bit of wasted space in here so there is uh, I could trim this down and make it a smaller pack, but this is the backpack I have, so this is what I use. But first of all, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the uh, antenna system that I use. I carry that around in this backpack, the uh, back pocket of the backpack. And first, uh, I have the uh, tripod. This is just a camera tripod that I use with a uh, mirror mount attached to it. I picked up a Radio Shack that I can attach my antenna to. The next part of the uh, the antenna system is the coil. This is a Wolf River Coil Silver Bullet 1000. Now you can do a search on Google for Wolf River Coil. It should bring it up. And uh, this is a tunable coil. So you've got the sleeve here. The tune will slide up and down, and it's tunable from 80 up to 10 meters. So that's uh, that attaches to the uh, the tripod here and you have the coil. The next thing I use, I used to use a 102 inch CV whip to go with this coil. However, that's not very portable and it would not easily fit into my backpack for obvious reasons. Uh, so what I have now is I have this. This is a actually a buddy pole telescoping whip. Uh, it is a long telescoping whip. It will extend to uh, 9 feet, maybe a little bit over 9 feet, uh, but that will attach to the top of the whip, and I can extend that, and I have a great vertical antenna system. In my back pocket as well, on the backpack, I have some RG58 uh, cable. Uh, it's a little bit long, uh, but it works. It's also not the best cable in terms of loss, but it's what I have laying around. It works. I made a lot of contacts with it, so I'll probably continue using it. There are some other better options out there, especially when you're operating QRP um, for less loss uh, in the coax, but again, it's what I have, it's what I use, and I'm not a rich man, so <laughs> I use what I have a lot of times. Also in my back, pocket there I carry some uh, this is some parachute cord I have a couple of links of random wire that I can tie to uh, one end of this parachute cord tie a water bottle on the other end throw the water bottle up over a tree limb up there and I hoist up a random wire made a lot of contacts with that as well so that's the reason I carry some parachute cord plus you never know when you might need some parachute cord it's got a million different uses it's kind of like duct tape all right in the front pocket here, I have a uh, two small front pockets. The top one, I carry uh, my microphone to my radio. I also carry the cigarette lighter adapter to charge the radio, as well as this is a cigarette lighter female plug. And at the other end, I have an Anderson power pole. I'll show you what that's all about in a minute. So that's what I have in the top pocket. The bottom pocket is that random wire I was telling you about. I've got two links of it. I can use them as counterpoises for my vertical antenna. I can also throw one up into a tree and then use the other throw out along the ground and use it as a counterpoise. Makes a great option. They're just some scrap wire I had laying around or if you need to you can pick it up at Walmart. Um, great option. Very simple and it doesn't cost you a whole lot of money. That's one thing I like about QRP and operating radar. I can use kind of what I have laying around and if it works, it's that much more satisfying to me. Now let's get to the, uh, what I call the meat and potatoes of my uh, radio bag here. Uh, in the main pocket I have a band chart. 
I'm a general class, so I don't have all the frequencies open to me on all the bands, so I can reference this um, when I need, when I'm not sure about where I can be operating, I can reference this. So I keep that in my backpack. I'll put that over there. It's not going in right now. <laughs> uh, this is my radio and its tuner. This is a Yaesu FT817. This is the ND model. Uh, it will give you uh, uh, 30 and 60 meters in addition to all the other bands that it covers. So it's an all-mode, all-band transceiver. And if you're new to radio and you don't know what all-mode means, it will do all the different modes of radio. So it'll do sideband. That'll be upper and lower sideband. It does AM, does FM. It'll do digital modes as well as CW. So that's what I mean when I say all-mode. It's all band. It covers everything from 160 meters up to uh, 70 centimeters. Um, so it's very uh, versatile, very durable. It's a well-built little radio. Uh, it's got an internal battery pack, so you can just operate it just like this, hooked to an antenna. The tuner you see on top here, uh, while the antenna coil I have will tune, uh, sometimes uh, you can use this to finalize the tuning if you get it close and just use this the rest of the way. I try not to use the tuner when I'm operating QRP. Uh, I want to use the coil as much as possible, but if, it's, if I need it, it's there. Also, I use this FT817 in my truck. Um, so I can use the tuner. I have that 102 inch whip on the back of my truck now. I can use this tuner to tune that and it'll cover most bands. One other thing about this radio, this radio is QRP. Uh, for, again, for those of you who are not familiar with uh, amateur radio and what that means, that's a low power radio. It operates 5 watts. Um, most of your base station radios will do somewhere around 100 watts. Uh, some of them will do more, but uh, it's low power, 5 watts. The last thing in my bag is this uh, sealed, lead, sealed lead acid battery. It does have the Anderson power pole on the end. Um, so I can plug this cigarette lighter female plug into this. I can use the cigarette lighter charging cable, plug into that, and I can power or charge my radio using this uh, sealed lead acid battery. This is a 12 amp hour, 12 volt battery. Um, picked up at Radio Shack for somewhere around $30. Um, the only downside to a steel lead acid battery is it is the heaviest thing in my bag. Um, it's substantial. It adds a lot of weight to your pack. So keep that in mind. There are some other options out there. I believe they're iron phosphate batteries. I'm not sure. Um, FEPO4 is the type of battery. There are steel lead acid replacements. And um, I've got a friend of mine that uses it uh, in our club here in town. And uh, we used them at field day operating his QRP station. They ran all night. They are a great option. They're a lot less weight, too. Probably half of this or more than half, or less than half of the weight of this. So uh, that's the gear that I use for portable operation and radar. I uh, hope it's been insightful. I hope uh, it gives somebody some ideas. And maybe people that watch this, uh, somebody hasn't had a whole lot of experience or exposure to amateur radio, it might spark their interest. One thing I like about doing radar is just getting outdoors, getting in the woods, and operating portable with the least amount of equipment possible. So thanks for watching, everybody. I do appreciate you tuning in and sticking through this video. I want to say have a great day. Uh, 73, as we say in the amateur radio world, and I'll catch you on down the log. Thanks again and we'll see you later. Goodbye.